In my two videos that a lot of you have watched, Living in Florida and Why Tampa, I highlight mostly the good things about living in Florida. It's in my nature to do so because I love these areas so much, but to be fair, no city and no state is perfect. So today, I'm gonna be very honest with you and talk about the not so perfect things about living in Florida. Hey everybody, this is Melanie Atkinson, Realtor with Smith & Associates in beautiful Tampa Bay, Florida. And today I'm going to do the opposite of what I should be doing as a real estate agent. I'm gonna try to talk you out of moving to Florida. Now, why would I do that? Because if after watching this video, you still want to move to Florida, you're going to be doing so with your eyes wide open. My goal is to have people move here and love it. People can't do that if they don't have realistic expectations. So today we're gonna go over all the itchy, frustrating, annoying, and scary things about living in Florida. It makes me a little sad to do this, but for the sake of disclosure, let's get started. Bugs and other creepy crawlies. There are so many bugs in Florida, so I'm gonna go over just the ones that I really, really dislike. Last weekend, I spent about an hour outside at dusk and my ankles were covered in mosquito bites. Now, mosquitoes don't just live in Florida, but they do thrive here and they stay around for a good portion of the year. A lot of times we're still dealing with mosquitoes at Halloween. And I'm one of those people that mosquitoes love, so I've been dealing with itchy ankles my whole life. We also have cockroaches. We have regular cockroaches, and we have a super special type of cockroach called a palmetto bug. These lovely creatures are larger than normal cockroaches, and they have wings, yes, I said wings. Twice a year, usually around May or September, your car will suddenly be peppered by black bugs. Welcome to love bug season. These slow flying two headed bugs won't bite you, but they will do their best to ruin the paint on your car. These bugs are called love bugs because while mating, they attach together and fly around, thus looking like two headed bugs. These are more of an annoyance than anything, but the car wash businesses love them. Everyone knows that there's lizards in Florida. They seem to be getting bigger all the time, actually. But one type of lizard that most people don't know about are skinks. The best way to describe them is a lizard snake combination. When they run, they move in a side to side motion which really resembles a snake. They always seem to be hiding under something so they can give you quite a scare whenever they start moving. But don't worry, they're harmless. So what do people in Florida do to survive all these creatures? We use bug spray, we screen in our back patio so we can enjoy our outdoor spaces bug free, and we have house and yard pest control. If you do all those things, it's pretty easy to coexist with all these creatures. Politics. If you haven't heard, Florida is a national political swing state. Now this one is a pro or con depending on your viewpoint. I love living in a state where every vote matters. It makes me feel very important. But the con part is that we get bombarded. I mean, we get the full assault of every national election. The only commercials that we see during election time are political ads. We get all the crazy ads, and if you still have a landline, you better believe that the person on the other end is a poll taker. Door knocking, candidate rallies that stop our traffic, giant postcards in the mail saying the other candidate is the worst person to ever run for that office, and so on and so on. For months, it's exhausting. So as much as I love the democratic process, during those times, I tend to watch a lot of Amazon Prime, Netflix, or Hulu. But bring it on 2020, I'm ready. Bad drivers. I'm not sure why everyone in Florida is in such a hurry, but people here drive like they're in a NASCAR race every day. Add on the fact that a lot of people here are tourists and don't know how to navigate our roads. They also don't realize that the speed limit is just a suggestion for us Floridians. Put those two things together and you end up with some bad accidents. Florida is populated with people that come from all different areas. And in general, people drive like they were taught when they were in those different areas. So in Florida, you get a meshing together of a lot of different driving styles. It can be a bit chaotic at times. So as a driver in Florida, you need to be a defensive driver. And on behalf of all of us Floridians, please only drive in the left lane if you're passing another car. Heat and humidity. We all know it's hot in Florida. It's supposed to be hot. It's a tropical climate, but the heat or the humidity isn't necessarily the con for me. It's hot everywhere in the summer. In fact, the hottest day that I've ever lived in my entire life was up in Champaign, Illinois when I was moving into my graduate school apartment. The con with the heat and humidity in Florida is not that it's here, it's how long it lasts. 
The difference between my graduate school apartment in Illinois is that once the summer was over, it wasn't hot and humid anymore. In Florida, that heat and humidity lasts for a large portion of the year. It can be 90 degrees on Thanksgiving. So if you're one of those people that doesn't get sick of hot weather, then pack your moving truck because Florida is the place for you. We residents deal with the heat and humidity with air conditioners everywhere. It's a really simple solution. Plus, when winter comes around, we don't really have to worry about the heat or the cold. I think it's a fair trade-off. Sinkholes. This one comes up a lot and I am not even going to pretend to be an expert on the science of sinkholes. Yes, they happen in Florida, so it's definitely a con. They happen more frequently in areas where the rock below is limestone and Florida is basically a bed of limestone. But the reality is, is that sinkholes affect a very small portion of the population here. There are areas of Florida that are more sinkhole prone than others. So if sinkholes are a big issue for you, then please do your research before deciding where to live. Crazy news stories. Have you ever noticed that when the news reports of someone doing something really crazy, more likely than not, that person is in Florida. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I do have my theories, but it certainly isn't something us normal people in Florida are proud of. I don't really have much else to say about this, but I wanted to acknowledge it and to let people out there watching know that we aren't all crazy here in Florida. In fact, a lot of us are really normal, educated, and downright boring people increased population. Florida overtook New York a few years ago to be the third most populated state in the United States. Currently, we have over 21 million people living here and it's expected to grow in 2019 by over one and a half percent. With a population of that size and more coming all the time, Florida definitely struggles with affordable housing and transportation infrastructure. More demand means our housing and rent prices go up, which means our cost of living goes up and our affordability goes down. State and local leaders are constantly challenged about how to manage the population growth in Florida. They want to allow residents to thrive here without taking away some of the aspects that make Florida such a great place to live. Look, there are definitely some really crowded places in Florida, but there are also a lot of really nice, quaint towns. You can absolutely find peace and quiet here in Florida and still be pretty close to the cities. Lightning and hurricanes and storms, oh my! I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our extreme weather because it is the number one con for a lot of people thinking about moving here. If you didn't know, Florida is the lightning capital of the United States. A lot of this lightning occurs during our almost daily summer storms that happen during the summer months. Most of these storms don't last very long, but they can produce an extreme amount of rain and a lot of lightning. These storms usually happen during the late afternoon, early evening hours, and can be very inconvenient if you have to drive through them. The more extreme weather events like hurricanes are always on our mind, and I will not diminish the seriousness of a hurricane. Anyone that lives in a Gulf Coast state or near the Atlantic coast needs to be mindful of hurricanes and prepare accordingly. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief when hurricane season is over, and then we get to enjoy the next several months of not having to worry about them. Insurance costs. So if you have a state with a growing population, extreme weather, and bad drivers, and then you sprinkle in a little bit of fraud, you have to believe that the insurance rates in that state are gonna be some of the highest in the nation. Car insurance rates are the third highest in the nation, and the same is true for homeowners insurance and flood insurance. The more risk, the higher the prices. So with all of these cons, why do people move to Florida? Well, as I said in the beginning, no place is perfect and Florida certainly is not. But for most of us who live here, the pros far outweigh the cons. Everyone knows about the weather and how nice it is during the winters. And everyone knows about the beaches. But for me, it's that Florida has an energy to it. It's never boring here. It's different cities with different vibes and sleepy seaside towns. It's salty air and citrus. It's flip-flops instead of snow boots and golf cleats on a Saturday afternoon. It's skyscrapers and fish shacks, roller coasters and palm trees. It's the Everglades and all the crazy stuff that lives in there. It's growth and the challenges that come with growth. It's grouper sandwiches, key lime pie, and sunsets. I hope this video helps you by knowing a little bit more about the challenges of living in Florida. When you come visit us, bring your sunscreen and your bug spray, you're definitely gonna need it. If you haven't checked out my Why Tampa video, take a look at that one to learn all about the Tampa Bay area. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with love, Melanie.